Amen. 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 We thank God for allowing us to be here one more time. Thank God for us allowing us to be here. On today we call Mother's Day. Amen. Amen. We want to certainly tell God thank you for our mother, Mother Wright, being here present. Thank you, Jesus. Glad for her to be here with us on today. Last year at this time, we couldn't even look on each other's faces because we was in shutdown and lockdown due to the COVID virus. Just want to tell God, thank you, Mother. And as I was sitting here and I looked at the, at the back of the choir and the young adult choir is here and I looked at the cars, I just want to tell you thank you for your labor of love in the Lord because this, these are products. We are products of your labor. We are fruit of your labor. And I want to personally tell you thank you for loving me and for loving us the way that you have loved us. We have not been a, uh, uh, easy people to deal with, but we want to tell you thank you for your patience. Thank you for your long suffering. Thank you for watching over our souls. We honor you today. This day we call Mother's Day. Thank God for you. We want God to bless you, Mother. And we love you. Amen. And also, too, we want to tell God thank you to all the mothers that are here present. And also, we want God to bless those who have lost their mothers in recent times. You know, we want God to bless you all as well. As the memories come back and flood on you, we want God to carry and lift you up at this time as well. We honor God again for being here, and I'm going to open up in a prayer. And then we got a short program in which we're going to go into, and then we're going to have Carolyn to give us a poem, and she's going to MC the rest of the program until I come back to my portion. Amen. We thank God again for being here. Let us pray. Father, wash us. Father God, in the name of Jesus, as we come before your throne this afternoon, we want to tell you thank you for once again, God, watching over us and keeping us. We want to tell you thank you, God, for our mother and the Lord, Mother Virginia Wright. Thank you, God, for giving me and giving us to her. And thank you, Lord, for how she is so carefully, with you in mind and you in view, watched over our souls. We honor you, God, for her being present with us on today, and we ask that you bless her in a mighty and a special way. And God, bless all the mothers that are here present under the sound of my voice. And we just want to tell you thank you for enabling us to come out one more time and assemble ourselves in your presence. And we ask that you come and bless us on today. Let the songs glorify and lift you up. And as we sing praises to your name, let the poems that are read be pleasing to all that hear it. And we thank you and praise you again for all that you do. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. In the hands of Sister Carolyn Mayberry. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Truly, we honor God for allowing us to be here one more time. And I tell you, I thank God also, Minister Ray, for the mother he has given us. And because of you, Mother, you taught us through the Word of God how we should be as mothers. So thankful for what you've done for me. It's the only way I was able to be a decent mother. But it was only after hearing God's word and you dealing with my life. So I'm honoring him today for what he has done. We love you. We truly be honor God for you. At this time, a poem. And the title of the poem is A Mother's Love. A, mother love, a mother's love is something that no one can explain. It is made of deep devotion and of sacrifice and pain. It is endless and unselfish and enduring come what may. For nothing can destroy it or take that love away. It is patient and forgiving when all others are forsaken. And it never fails or falters even though the heart is breaking. It believes beyond belief when the world around condemns and it glows with all the beauty of the rarest, brightest gems. It is far beyond defining. It defies all explanation and it still remains a secret like the mysteries of creation. A many splendid miracle man cannot understand and another wondrous evidence of God's tender guiding hand. Mother Wright, you have shown to each of us God's meaning of a mother's love. How can one bear the birth pains of so many? We thank you for your life in Jesus and we know that he is the reason that you have gathered us under your wings. You have fought for our souls and have never given up. We want this poem to lift you up 
high above the clouds. Be encouraged, Mother, and know that your love has given us hope. And from the bottom of our hearts, we love you. And Mother, we say thank you. In the name of Jesus, we ask God to bless you abundantly. At this time, we'll have three testimonies in this order. Brother Adrian Cockfield, Sister Carolyn Johnson, and Sister Robin Sanders. Good evening. I certainly want to thank God for this opportunity. And, uh, you know, as I reflected back on my life, uh, I'm just so grateful to be in a place where God, He will go to the darkest places. And uh, I just think about how I was raised in this truth and so many years of rejection. It put me in a place where So to speak, I was on my last leg. But one day in Leesburg, the Lord, he came by his spirit and he told me to make a choice. And I tell you today, those were the sweetest words that I could have ever heard in my life because it allowed me to know that God was giving me space to repent. But I know in this truth, we always told how you don't know what's going to happen to you. You may be in good health today, but you don't know what tomorrow holds. And about a year, almost a year and a half ago, um, I came down with a sickness that uh, I've never been this sick in my life. And um, it was about six days in a row I had a temperature of uh, about 105 degrees. And... Uh, Maybe around day five, it had got so bad. I remember going in the bathroom and I said, God, I, I don't want to leave my right. I don't want to leave my keep. The heat inside of my body, I believe it was taking me almost to the grave. But I believe, I believe in my heart, God heard my words. Because the next day, I got a sweet phone call. And the phone call said, I don't know why you were so heavy on me. Now, they walked me through all of my dark nights. They held me. They took my mind off of the sickness. There were some nights I was able to smile in the midst of being so sick. I want you to know I had a mother. A mother that nourished me back to health. And in the midst of all of that, I want to ask God to forgive me. Because that was an experience where I believe I was at the brink of death. But I'm here today. And I can look up towards heaven and I can tell you, Lord, I thank you for letting me live long enough to get those other areas in my life. Get them right. Be there for someone who has been there in my darkest days. And I honor God for what he's moving our church to. 
to know that they had no one. I'm included, but I want to bow down before God. And I thank you, Lord, for letting me live. And happy day to happy Mother's Day to your mother. And I want you to know I miss you.
I can't. I don't even want the people that I hurt. I don't even want them to hear the sound of my voice. I don't even want them to see my face. I don't even want to ask them to forgive me because I don't deserve their forgiveness. But what I want to do, I want to forever praise God for the one he used. I want to pour my praises on the Lord for being able to live in his power. I want to praise God for someone who obeyed him. I want to praise God every day for somebody never giving up on obeying what God say do. Because when he ordains someone, it's almost like they don't have a choice. They don't have a choice except to obey what he said. Because their life is no longer theirs. But I want to tell God I thank Him today for Mother's Day. My mother, the Lord, I got two for the hatred. I don't want to be without her anymore. If I get to just see the car that she drives me, if I just know that she's somewhere near.
<laughs> that sweet voice was on the phone. He said, hey, darling, I don't want to hold you long. I just, I have to move. When God tells me to move, I have to move when it's on. <laughs> she said, but I want to tell you that I want God to protect you. Put a shield of protection around you in the name of Jesus.
like Mama told me. But there's someone whose love is real, who cares about the way I feel. I every pain, and erase every stain. There's peace when.
in verse 4. And it reads as follows. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. And from that verse of scripture there, my subject today is in the form of a question. Am I ready for the battle? Am I ready for the battle? As being a true born and a true child of God, there are battles in which we want to have to fight and battles that's going to come our way. But the question is, am I ready for the battle? And then I think about us here, how God has tried to give us something so unique. He has tried to instill in us and put in us his word, the truth of his word, how we've been taught. Someone has not tried to cut corners with it. They have not been slack with it. Even when they find themselves as they read and they have to bow their heads and say, thank you, God. And they ask God to show them themselves. I want God to do the same for me. As I'm thinking back on our, our message on last night, a week, excuse me, and uh, one of the things I brought out and read, and I want to reread it again today, was a true minister. A true minister of the gospel must be long-suffering, patient, gentle, loving. Their first aim should be to love as Jesus loved, to serve as Jesus served, in love and tenderness. They should go after the lost, bring them into the fold, and after they become members of the fold, should feed the lambs and watch after the sheep. So when the battle comes, am I ready for the battle? Because the servant of God, the scripture tells us, should not strive with the people. So that means that the individuals themselves, it's time for them to fight for what they know and they say God has done for them. But you cannot fight the battles in you. You cannot fight the battles when you're not doing what God would have you to do. And this here is the Apostle Paul was under, under attack by individuals that came in under his ministry that he established and they were trying to undermine his credibility. They were trying to say that he was not the apostle of God and they were trying to say all kind of other evil things against him. But guess what, saints? His work and his life spoke for him. But we the people need to be in such a shape that we are able and we stand strong when we find out that our leader is being attacked by the enemy. But I cannot fight when I'm not communicating in my house to my wife on issues that we need to talk about. I cannot fight when I'm wrapped up in that family thing. I cannot fight when I don't even allow God to do the things needed in me just to, to make simple and, and, and ordinary uh, uh, way of life. I struggle with it. But here we're going to look at it. This is verse 1. Paul is addressing these people. Now I, Paul, myself, receipt you. And they, were, they made the allegation that he was weak and that he was not a strong person. Paul the Apostle was a giant in Christ. All the churches that he established, he established it. He went under nobody else's foundational groundwork. He was the, the ground builder, the, the foundation layer, and the one that erected through the help of his Holy Spirit and the help of God. He said, now I, Paul, myself, speaking under the authority given to him by Jehovah, receipt you, earnestly asking you, by the meekness and gentleness of Christ, he, was, he said, uh, by the example that I'm copying, who in, present, who in presence am based among you, being absent and bold towards you. He was letting them know when I come around you, I am humble, not because I, I'm a weak person. I'm doing it because I'm walking after the example that's before me. I'm doing it because I'm walking after the example that Christ has set. And he's allowing them to know, I told you to follow me as I follow Christ. And Christ was a meek man. He was the son of the living God. But you would have never known it the way he walked about on the face of the earth when he was here in his earthly ministry. So he was saying, I was being as he was. Saying here, verse 2, But I beseech you that I may not be bold when I am present with that confidence wherewith I think to be bold against some which think of us, speaking concerning himself, as if we walk according to the flesh. They were saying that he was walking in the flesh. And he was allowing them to know that when I come, if I have to use my authority, I'm going to stand up and show to you and prove to you just who I am in Christ. 
I'm going to stand up and I'm going to show to you that feedback coming here who I am and I'm going to let you know when I stand and use my authority that God has given to me to do what it is that he had authorized me to do as being an apostle to you and to others. But it is something else when the enemies of God comes into camp. When the enemies attack and slander, then real Christian qualities and grace come to the surface. If a man is really spiritual, he will be Christian even when things are unpleasant. He will prove that, his, that God's grace is sufficient for every trial. And the Apostle Paul did just that. But I don't want us so much to think on him and we don't focus on us. I want God to bring us back to show us why is it I had no one. When someone, I was thinking and meditating on that throughout this week. That is a, one of the worst things almost, if you will, that can be said about someone who say that they are true born child of God. For to be said, you wasn't there when I needed you. It shows and makes a bold statement against you and against me. And it's time that in that statement that we must ask God, Lord, show me what's in my heart. Show me how I am. Show me what it is I need to allow you to do for me so I can get rid of these things that I don't need in my life. Amen? Because when you don't allow God to do what's needed and necessary for you, guess what? You will show you up, and it will show up at the wrong time, and you will hate and regret that it has shown up. But in the meantime, when God is telling you, let God bless you, let God show you, let God do this, let God do that, don't take those words as being slack. And don't take them as just being said, just to be said. They're being said and they're being given for a reason for you and for I to allow God to do what's needed and necessary within our lives. They were saying that he was walking in the flesh. Think to be bold against some, which think of us as if we walk according to the flesh. For though we walk in the flesh, he was saying we live in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. Because the weapons, verse 4, for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, mighty through God to the pulling down of stronghold. But you cannot even begin to attack Satan when you're so full of yourself. You cannot even begin to attack Satan when you have something in you against another and you refuse to go and get those matters right because you want to hold on to how you are. You cannot even begin to try to tear down any stronghold when you walk about and you enter your home and when you enter your home and walk about in your home, you're the one whose spirit fills it with a stiffness and a stillness because you want nothing said to you about how you are. But I want to honor God. Someone told us to stand strong and confess how you are and get right with Him. Amen? Thank you, Jesus. It is something else when it's time for a battle and you're not dressed. When you're not dressed for the battle, you cause more havoc than you think. When you're not dressed for the battle, you put all of the strain on somebody else's shoulder and you carry none for yourself. When you're not dressed for the battle, you go in and you, the person that is, is, is sees and knows that you're not dressed, they then have to provide for you a way in which you can survive. You think about military, mixed militarily, that you can stay back to the rear and not put yourself in any further jeopardy or harm or even not slow down the process or the progress that's going to be made as we go to battle. Going to battle against the spirit and the spirit world. We need to have a clear channel between us and God so His Spirit can tell us and lead us and guide us and direct us in the way in which we should do and go. Because if we don't have that clear channel, we will not be successful in the battle against Satan. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and wickedness in high places. We wrestle against those things in which we don't see. But someone, as the Apostle here, labored for us, labored for the Corinthians, labored for the saints of God, house of worship, church members. Someone laid the foundation. Someone worked, someone prayed, and someone reached heaven for me. What I would tell you, it's sad when I'm not dressed for the battle. It's a sad, sad thing when I fail to just hear simple instructions and choose to follow them just out of love and respect for whom God has placed within my presence and whose God, whom God has placed before me. It is a hard-headed man and woman who thinks they know what's best for them in Jesus and they just got saved. You don't know and you don't even have a clue. But someone that's been there for a while can really truly help you. But we do not war after the flesh. And I thank God for someone not warring after the flesh. Because if someone had warred after the flesh, it's 
no telling where we would be. Because if someone warred after the flesh, when I make them upset and mad, guess what? They'll be they'll react to me as a person in the flesh. But remember, they're patient, they're long suffering. But I don't need to push their patience and their long suffering because the Lord God Jehovah is watching. And if He has placed them to be the watcher over my soul, I must obey and listen to what it is that they're saying to me. Meek. This was the description of the Apostle Paul. It, it describes a spirit which has been schooled to mildness by discipline or suffering. And he was such a person. He was schooled to such act, uh, discipline and long suffering. Go to St. Luke chapter 22. And you might start reading verse 14. Luke 22. 14. Thank God for him casting down, destroying those imaginations, those stories, and those false accusations that came against him. Thank God for a life being lived in my presence. And I want to honor God just for just allowing us to be here one more time. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Luke 22. This here is the, this is the Lord. And he, uh, Judas Iscariot has already went and met with the scribes and the Pharisees. And Satan entered him and he made a deal with them as to betray Jesus and they were wait for the opportune time. It's now the Lord is instituting the Lord's Supper here, the Last Supper with the disciples. They were having the Feast of Unleavened Bread right before the Passover lamb was to be killed. Jesus told Peter and John to go to this place and he told them who to look for. It's a man that was carrying a water pot. And when you find that man, he's going to show you the room and the place that I want you to prepare for us to have our Last Supper together. And they went and they found everything as the Lord had instructed. And now they were having supper in, with the Lord in the upper room. And this is here at verse 14. It states, this is Luke 22 and verse 14. And when the hour was come, he sat down and the twelve apostles with him. Verse 15. He said unto them, With desire I have desired to keep this Passover with you before I suffer. Isn't it something he was saying? I take pleasure in being able to enjoy this last meal with you. Before I face the cross of Calvary and before, before I end up in the Garden of Gethsemane. Now he knew already that Judas had already made a deal to betray him. And he knew already just how all the disciples were at this time. But what I'm trying to show you is it's, sad, it's a sad thing when I or you or anyone is said that we're a child of God, we're not dressed for the battle. When we're not dressed for the battle, we're going to always leave somebody alone. And we're going to always bring some serious wounds to their heart. When you turn around and you look you look in the face of somebody that should be there for you. And they're not there for you. That is more painful than any blow from an enemy. When the person that's supposed to be there is not there for you. Amen. And he was desiring to eat this meal with his disciples. But we see here the condition in which they were in and how they were. With the Lord yet still loving them did not want to give up on them. He wanted yet still to bless them and to do for them what was needed and necessary at this time in their life. For I say unto you, verse 16, I will not any more eat thereof until it be fulfilled in the kingdom of God. So he was allowing them to know this meal here with you and I will be our last. This meal with you and I will be the last one we will have together until we meet again in the kingdom. He was facing something that he had about to face something that he had never faced before in his earthly ministry. And he was preparing his disciples for what was about to come upon him. And as he was there with them, they, he shared with them the bread and the wine. He shared that and broke it with them. And then he said, uh, this here, uh, verse 21. Behold, but behold, the hand of him that betrayeth me is with me on the table. And truly the Son of Man goeth as it was de determined. But woe unto that man by whom he is betrayed. I may look at Judas as being a betrayer. And he was just that. But I can't look at him and don't see me. I can't look at another and I fail to see how I am. Judas, yes, he coveted for those 30 pieces of silver. 
But Lord knows I didn't even have it. The silk. But I yet still was it there. The question is, am I dressed for the battle? I can talk the talk. But when it comes down to putting words into action, is it in my heart? That's where it needs to be. So I can be there when the battle begins and the fight starts. And I'm going to show you something. And, and I heard the word this morning. I looked it up. And I heard it said infighting. Infighting. It means, close my book, try to stop it. But uh, infighting, the definition is prolonged and often bitter dis dissension or rivalry among members of a group or organization. Again, infighting, prolonged and often bitter dissension or rivalry among members of a group or organization. Gotta ask God to forgive me. Because when I was thinking about it, I thought about it, I said, now how is it being in a place of truth where you're told the word of God and an example is lived before us and it's been told to us to communicate? How is it when one has something in them against another, you don't go to that person, but you find somebody just like you that you can go and gossip about this person, but you don't realize when you gossip, you make that person you talk to feel like you feel about another individual. And that you, that person that feels like you feel, that individual that you're talking about begins to feel and sense these things, but they have done nothing wrong. Sometimes just in going and talking, you clear up simple matters. But when you refuse to go and talk and clear up simple matters, you're not dressed for the battle. You're causing more damage. You're doing more harm. You're doing more hurt. Just like when the husband walks through the house and he doesn't talk to his wife or the wife walks through the house, she doesn't talk to her husband because they refuse to discuss matters that would clear up the house and cause the atmosphere in the house to change and be one in which God is pleased with because he says to us as believers, true one believers, that we should communicate with each other. The scripture tells us, confess your faults one to another and pray ye one for another. But if I'm not willing to talk to you where I feel that you have wronged me, if I'm not willing to talk to you where I may have even wronged you, how can we clear up things and be able to truly confess our faults and sins one to each other? We must allow God to do in our hearts and do for us what is needed so we'll be able to fight the battle. Now, I want to read this, go here too. Jesus says to him, he said, But behold, the hand of them, this is verse 21 again. But behold, the hand of him that betrayeth me is with me on the table. Verse 22, And truly the Son of Man goeth as it was determined. But woe unto that man by whom he is betrayed. Verse 23 says, And they begin to inquire among themselves which of them it was that should do this thing. And I can understand them even asking that question. Because I would want to know if something is said. Lord, is it me? You understand what I'm saying? To find out. But, uh, this is what really said a lot to me. Verse 24. And there was also a strife among them. Which of them should be accounted the greatest? And I said, Lord, have mercy. I'm trying to tell you it was a battle fought. But what, what, the outcome of what should have been nowhere that it should have been. But when you're not dressed for the battle, you will sit up in a battle and someone can just pour out their heart to you. Telling you their risk on what they're going through and what they have to face. But you are worried about minor things. Things that don't even matter. Things that don't even concern the battle. Things that won't even help in this situation. But you're worried about the wrong thing. What I was looking at, when your mind is not in the right place, because you've been carnal all week, you can't walk into a battle and think you're going to be victorious. You cannot say, well, I don't like reading. And you don't pick up the Bible at all until the Sunday school time. And you read the scriptures then. And you communicate with God not the first time all week. And then you expect to walk into a battle and be victorious. When you have sin in your life because you choose not to just do the simple act of communicating within your house concerning issues. You don't realize there's a separation between you and God. And in that there's no way you can be dressed in the battle. Being dressed for the battle first starts with having an honest, true assessment of who you are, what you are, and how you are within your heart. And that assessment is not what I give myself. That's what God gives to me through His most precious and His holy word. He said, I, the Lord, I search the heart, and I try the reins to give to every man that what he's desired.
deserving of. So let God search. Let God show you. Am I dressed? Or am I just a talker? Am I dressed? If I'm a gospel, I'm not. If I hold things in my heart, I'm not. If I don't let the people come to me, the minute they come to me, I want to speak with you concerning this, I swell up, I'm not dressed. Amen? Let God do what needs to be done so we can be the people God would have us to be. I'm so glad someone taught me and showed me how to get dressed for the battle. But it's a sad thing to have in my record, I, had, I didn't have it, and I was left all alone. And for that, I want God to forgive me. And for that, I want God to show me. When God showed me these scriptures here, I'm going to be brief closing. I saw how it's a terrible thing as a Christian to have it said that I was not there for another saint that was going through. Especially someone that has fought for my soul. It's a sad, sad thing not to have what you need on the inside to defend the righteousness of God and to stand up for a life that you knew God used to bring you out of sin. Just like the individuals in the Corinthians church, they knew the Apostle Paul was the one God used to bring them out. So when those false apostles came with all those wrong statements about his life, they could have easily stood and defend him, just like I could do the same thing. But I'm honoring God for keeping me faced into, into wanting to see God what was in me. And I want to face it and repent of it the way God would have me to face it and to repent of it. I want to be broken and sorry because see, God decided I'm going to roll through the bowels of battle and I'm going to come get you from the Nassau Bahamas. All those preachers in my family, back both sides, left and right, mother, father side, where no one was able to reach heaven for me. Someone reached heaven for the people in the Corinthian church as someone reached heaven for us here in Albany, Georgia. If someone hadn't reached heaven, where would we be today? But let's do this, saints. Let God examine us and help us to be dressed for the battle. Time out for losing the battles. Let us win it, and let's win it with vigor, because we love the Lord. Amen? Thank God for his word. Thank God for what he's done for us. Thank God for all that are here present. If God was able to speak to your heart, you want to come and let God do for you what you can't do for yourself. You want God to save your soul and write your name in the Lamb's Book of Life. We invite you to come here, Mother Light. We want to wish you again a happy, happy Mother's Day. Amen. Our God for you. Thank you, God. I see she said, Kathy, be in here. It's good to see her. Amen. Thank God for keeping her. Thank God for keeping all of us. We look at the Lord to continue to bless us and give us that what we needed in our lives so we can become and be the people that he would have us to be. Let us look to the Lord and pray. Thank you, Jesus. Father God, once again, as we come before your throne this afternoon, we want to tell you thank you, God, for what you've done for us. We want to tell you thank you, God, for your word. And we want to tell you thank you for our mother. Thank you for all the mothers, Lord, here. And we want to tell you thank you and ask you to keep those who have lost their mothers in recent months. And God, we honor you just for blessing us to walk out and be able to come out one more time. And that's as we leave here, Lord, today, that you go back with us to our different state places and allow the mothers that are here, especially our mother and the Lord, to have a wonderful day on today. Bless in Jesus' name we pray and we thank you. Amen. God bless you all. That the words of my mouth, the meditation of my heart, be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Amen. Praise God. And see yourselves dismissed.